Hey, it's Ox Dear Luke here, and in today's video, I'm looking at this smartphone based diagnostic tool from King Bolan. Okay, let's start off with a quick story. About five or six years ago, I was sent a Chinese code reader, and long term viewers of the channel might remember this, but I had a pretty bad experience of both the product and the company. And at that time, the two companies that were kind of big coming out of China for diagnostics were King Bolan and Launch. The thing is, five years later, those companies are still there. And they're not just surviving, they seem to be thriving. And the company I had a problem with was Launch. And I don't know whether King Bolin and Launch are linked because they seem to have a very similar product set with very similar interfaces. This is not the Launch products that I had. This is actually my dad's one. And he bought this about a month or two ago. And I give this one a go. And I was very impressed with the feature set on it. This comes in about 250 to 300 pounds, but for that you get like a tablet interface, which, uh, you know, it's nice and easy to use. It feels robust. It can do quite a few functions like programming injectors, um, doing stuff like DPF regens, as well as reading fault codes. Now, the thing is, King Bolan contacted me a few weeks ago and I wanted to send me this one. This is a smartphone enabled diagnostic reader. Normally I'm a little bit skeptical about the smartphone ones. I know we think they're not as feature rich. But then I looked at this one and I was amazed that £99 instead of 250 to 300 this does almost everything that does, or pretty much everything. In some ways it does more. And, well, I thought I'd give it a go because I was surprised how good the launch one was. Let's give King Bolin a go and see what that was like. So they sent this out to me. Uh, I tried it out. There was an app for both iPhone and Android. The app seems pretty much identical. There isn't an app for iPads. That's something I would really like to see developed because that's going to give you more of this style interface, which seems a bit more professional and easier to use. And I think you get more data displayed on the screen using that. But never mind, that's not too big of a deal because smartphones are still pretty capable these days. So I've tried this out on my Ford Cougar and I'm going to show you now the results of it. And then once I've done that, we'll come back to uh, here and I'll give you the conclusion. Well, I'm here in my broken Ford Cougar, and the first thing I'm going to do is turn the ignition on and place the diagnostics in the OBD port. As you can see, it's come up green, which shows that there's power going to it. The next thing you're going to need to do is connect the phone to the scanner. So I'm just going to hit the Bluetooth icon in the top right, and it's going to ask me if I want to activate. I'm going to click yes, and then on the manual that came with it, you're going to get a serial number and activation codes that needs to go in here. With us now in the app, let's go ahead and run some diagnostics on this car. Let's start off with all system diagnostics. It's going to read the VIN, which is going to find the information based on this particular car and load this all up. It will download any software that's required for this particular car, and then it can perform its scan. Right, after about 30 seconds, we're into the car. I just need to click the help for ports up here, and it's going to perform a full diagnostic of the car and come up with any fault codes from the modules that are installed on it. And here we are, here's our list of fault codes. We've got six fault codes in these modules and the rest of these modules are all okay. So for example, if I go into the restraint module now, I know exactly what this is. I had the front seats out when I was cleaning it. I bet you this comes up as the two front seats coming up with issues. If I read the DCCs, we've got the driver's safety belt and side airbag circuit. So let's clear these fault codes. And I'm going to do the same thing for all the fault codes here at the moment. So I can actually clear all the fault codes at once and let's see which ones come back. Now, what's really cool about these diagnostics is that I can not only just do the fault codes, but I can also perform actuation tests, which means that there are certain parts of the car that I can turn on and off just using the phone, which is really good for fully trying to diagnose where faults are. So if I click, for example, the front wiper relay, I can actually activate this relay and the wipers should come on. See, how cool is that? And until I turn it off, it'll just carry on. And you've got this kind of control for all the modules throughout the car. So I can do lots and lots of stuff just playing around with this. Fault finding, diagnosing, which is just really cool to do. One thing I'm finding really great on this is the module programming, which allows us to change some features on the car that you normally wouldn't have access to. So if I go to programmable factors, I can turn off the warning chime, say, for the seatbelt reminder. So if I've got a bag on the front seat, it won't go off. I'll click OK, and then I'll deactivate that particular chime. 
procedure succeeded. Well, there's some of the diagnostic functions, but if we go to maintenance now, there's so much more we can do. Have a look at all this maintenance stuff we can do on here. So, for example, I had the fault before that I suspect is something to do with the TPF, so I can download the TPF software for this and perform a TPF regeneration on the car with just the phone. So I can do TPF filter static regeneration. So now I'm going to get the coolant temperature up to where it should be, and then I'm going to perform a TPF regeneration on the car. Other stuff you can do is read live data from the car. So the car is on at the moment, and I can see the coolant temperature going up. And I can record this as well. So if you're driving along and you're trying to look for a fault that happens at a particular time, you can record that function and review it at a later period as well. And there's also other useful information it's showing me, like the last regeneration happens 400 miles ago. So it probably doesn't need a DPF regen. There's something else wrong with this car and it's helping me narrow the fault down. So these are all the modules I can get live data from. So if I go to something like the powertrain control module, there's so much information here that I can look at. It's crazy. If I go to read data stream, look at all this information I can bring up on the screen and view live so I can, for example, look at the glow plugs on these two. I click OK and it shows me exactly the status of these particular things. And if I click record, then I can record this information live and review it at a later date and see where the faults happen. And that can help me diagnose where the faults are later. So what's the pros and cons of a smartphone based diagnostic kit versus a dedicated unit? Well, the dedicated unit is nice to use. The interface is great. It's got physical buttons. That's really cool. However, there's actually more freedom with the smartphone for the reasons that you're not tied with physical cables. When I, when I plug this launch one in, I'm going to use a physical cable to plug this in. Uh, then if I'm trying to use live data and such when you're driving and record stuff, get a bit bulky, it's in the way. With this one, I can kind of put the phone down the side in a pocket. I can plug this in, record data. I can walk around the outside of the car. I can activate features. Maybe I've got this in a diagnostic port. I'm doing stuff underneath the engine bay. I can run a diagnostic again, see if that fault's cleared. You know what I mean? There's just a bit more freedom for people to use with the smartphone way of doing stuff. And I would say for the average consumer, this is probably a better unit than the dedicated ones, especially when you consider the upfront cost. Whereas the dedicated ones like this cost around 250 to 300 pounds. This one is costing you 99 pounds. So firstly, there's a big saving right off the bat, but that does come with a hidden cost. And the thing is, is that dedicated unit, that's got lifetime updates. This one lasts for one year, and then you have to take out a subscription to uh, to carry on using the features. And that subscription is £80 pounds per year. So you can kind of look like your diagnostic tools like 20 and your subscription's 80 in the first year if you kind of want to split that up. The thing is, do I think it's worth £80? Pounds? I'm going to say yes, because I was very, very, very impressed with the amount of features this thing had. Honestly, it just held its own completely against the £300 units. There wasn't anything that did that this one didn't do. In some ways, this did more. I'm able to just email the ports out very easily from a smartphone, for example. So that's a bit more convenience. I would say when you look at the cost of taking your car to a garage to get diagnostics done, that's where this still makes sense. So you go to a back street or an indie garage, you're going to be paying... 40 to 60 pounds for a single diagnostic session. If you take some main dealer, you're looking easily over 100. And then if you need to take it back again, you've got to pay it again. And you can see how that cost quickly racks up. And then you can compare it to this, where you can use as much as you want for the entire year. You can turn features on and off. You can use it on the same day over and over as you try to fault find. And that's really going to pay for itself, especially when you can use it on pretty much any make and model of car. So I do think that the £80 is easily justifiable if you're going to use this once or twice in a year. Use it twice, you're coming in, um, you quit them. And that's the way I look at it. But that hidden cost is definitely worth considering because there are cheaper units or units at the same price that don't require a subscription, but they don't do as much. And then there are units, yes, that do just as much, but then they cost a lot more up front. You would still have to own this for four years, three or four years with subscription to even get close to what this one costs. So you've got to kind of consider that side of stuff as well. So do I recommend it? Absolutely. Am I actually going to be using this on my own cars going forward? Yes, it's a great tool to keep with me. It's very small, it's compact. I really like it. 
So that's uh, my experience with King Boland so far. I'm very impressed. I, I thoroughly am. And they're not begging me to say that. That's my own opinion on, on how this is. So if you like this video anyway, uh, if you want to see more diagnostic equipment, this type of stuff being checked out, let me know in the comment section below because I'd, I'd like to check more of this equipment out as well if you guys want to see that. Anyway, that's it, guys. Thank you all for watching. See you soon. And as always, take care.